Welcome to Obrew. I'm Craig Morris and I like beer, but I prefer the unique flavors and aromas of the many craft beers now available. In this series, I will be in search of Ohio's finest beers, with Ohio ranking fifth in craft beer production and already close to 300 breweries and new ones popping up all the time, we have a lot of beer to drink. Today, we'll be visiting the Sandy Springs Brewing Company, located in the old filling station in downtown Minerva on the corner of North Market and Lincoln Highway. This brewery is owned and operated by hometown couple Andy and Amanda Conrad. They opened in 2017 and quickly have became a favorite among the craft beer community, drawing in beer enthusiasts from as far away as Cleveland and Columbus. Brewmaster Andy has created some of the very unique beers you must try. In this episode, we will be talking to Andy and Amanda about how they got started and what they have to offer here at the brewery. Then Amanda will show us their newest addition, the Brewer's Quarters. Next, we will take a tour of the brew house and then head to the tap room where we'll taste some great beer with Andy and he'll tell us about their beers and what they have on tap. And like always, we'll find out what the customers think of Sandy Springs Brewing Company. We're here at Sandy Springs Brewing Company and uh, joining us right now is Amanda and Andy Conrad and welcome Thanks. to Thank you. Obrew. Thank you. It's glad to have you with us. Um, let's start from the very beginning of how you two got into the business of beer. Um, I'd say it really started, we, we both had a, a passion for different styles of beer when we met in 2000 even. Um, and then we were both in physical therapy school. My pharmacology professor brewed beer at home, and that was kind of the start of everything. Did he have like a party or something? Did you, you know, he just, he was, or, talked about the science behind it and um, invited us over to see how, you know, he was doing these smaller, smaller extract batches of beer. And okay. um, that's say it's really, Tom. Tom Freeland. Yeah, Tom Freeland. <laughs> Tom yeah. Freeland? Yeah, we'll, okay. Yeah, yeah, throw a shout out to Tom for sure. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's where it started. And then we started brewing beer during college as well. And then. Um, well, that's even better. Yeah. Because you don't need a fake ID for stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. That works yeah. good. Yeah. I never thought about that. <laughs> yeah. You can tell the difference in age between yeah. you guys and myself. <laughs> I had to buy a fake ID. You don't yeah, I, anyway. I've been there too, so it's, it's all good. So, but uh, yeah, so once we finished college, we traveled. Um, we took a contract job out west, um, bought a motor home, uh, worked for hospital settings uh, in the southwest and west coast that needed needed help, and we started running into small craft breweries in New Mexico, and that's really where it started. We had our first um, coffee stout in a can, uh, IPA in a can, and that. To us, I think was the, the pinnacle of when we started seeing like these flavors of craft beer come. So the come coffee to life. stout and IPAs yeah. were your favorites. Yeah. Right out of Back the shoot. Then. Oh yeah, right out of the, right out of the bat. Yeah. And then um, so we started traveling to breweries after that. So uh, breweries throughout uh, New Mexico, Utah, Arizona, Colorado. Those were that was the very beginning for us, and we started to see small, in particular, small craft breweries that. Um, had been in just little industrial areas or areas that uh, hadn't been developed yet. And we saw the impact that those breweries had, and we, th we really thought that that would be something that uh, would, would go well here in Minerva. So but, uh, some of these breweries that you stopped at, you know, did they have places for people to stay? Kind of like Not at that point, no. no. Now, we didn't see any of, anything like that out there. That was part of our inspiration for what we've done with the Brewers' Quarters is because uh, we traveled quite a distance and had to get a lot to come home so that we... But fortunately yeah. with the motorhome, you know, there's yeah. always a RV park or a trailer park. Yeah. Or a Walmart. Really close or to a, Walmart, yeah. a brewery so we didn't have to worry about, yeah. you know, driving. And so I feel like in hindsight that was probably like <laughs> stirring, Yeah. you know. Yeah. It makes you appreciate a real shower. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, yeah. it does. 
Two, yeah. two and a half years. That explains a lot, too. Almost three years. And Taking we'll get military to that later on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so a, as you funneled back to the big old town here in Minerva, um, you decided you wanted to start a brewery? Yep. Or did yeah, so we started come? developing that business, the business plan and the idea of coming uh, to this area out west. Um, our initial idea, um, we'd been to quite a few breweries that were outside of town out there. And so our first vision was to have it on our farm. So um, I'm the, the fifth generation to live on our family farm, and it's just gorgeous out there, nothing but farm fields around it. We had an old uh, 1800s tea barn that we thought that was our original plan was to go out there and, and start a small brewery and have people come out to the country, sip on some beer, have a little bit of food, and then, uh, you know, go home. But um, I'll let you kind of go from there as far as... So w once we decided yeah. that, uh, July 4th, we had it looked at by a structural engineer to make sure the integrity was good enough to have uh, a business in it. So he said everything looked really, really good. We just had to put a little bit of money into it. And then six days later, it got struck by lightning and burnt to the ground on July 10th. So at that point, you know, we kind of gathered ourselves and took a little time off. And, you know, we had to clean up the huge mess out there, the, you know, the barn and everything. So we salvaged everything that we could. Uh, the only thing that we salvaged from that fire was some of the barn wood that you'll find throughout the tap room. And this stuff is beautiful. Thanks. Yeah, very, it's, it's... Very nice stuff. I mean, you know, you can't can't put a value even on yeah. this yeah, stuff here absolutely. for the most part. Yeah. yeah. So once, so we saved some of that wood, you know, hoping that someday we would have a brewery and wondering if where we would be. Uh, took some time off. We ended up having a daughter, a little girl, and um, once I was on maternity leave, that's when I really started working with the, the Small Business Development Center to formulate our business plan, work on different models. Um, Denise Freeland uh, was relentless with helping us find a place. So she just didn't live, let us give up on our dream. That's a pretty interesting fact, too, because Tom Freeland was my pharmacology professor in, in college. He's the one that started us brewing beer. Denise, uh, six years later, was really the, the driving force, showing us all the buildings around town, uh, and that's his wife. So between the two of them, we yeah. wouldn't be here Their force. You know, without. <laughs> yeah, so. And I take it very good friends. Uh, yeah. They're yeah, awesome. I mean, they're awesome, awesome people. But good deal. It's That's just awesome. kind of crazy how that worked out. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's how it's supposed to go. Kind of you know, probably weren't too sure at one time. It was, yeah. you know, it's, it's one of those things that's a silver lining. At the time, it was just sure. devastating. And, yeah. you know, it was, it was heartbreaking. But then, you know, we couldn't imagine being anywhere else than, than down yeah. here on the corner. Um, you know, it's, it's been great being down here. You know, the patio is wonderful. The foot traffic, it's easy for people to get to. And it's, it's nice to be part of downtown yeah. you know the and community support that we have down I, here is I was just outstanding say, even yeah. just a lot of the facades of the buildings yeah. and stuff yeah. you know since i've been younger and in, in this area i've noticed that they've really come a long yeah, way yeah. for sure and it's not that they were run down it's just that they just everything got old mm -hmm. yeah. now yeah. everything that's old is cool yeah. it is. so i mean that's <laughs> That's where we're living, you know, how we're we living love, today. Yeah, we love the old buildings. Yeah. yeah. And to be able to, to, to buy something like this today, yeah. or, you, you know, it would be totally impossible. Yeah. yeah. So that's very cool. Yes. Well, we talked about a lot of the stuff here in the brewery. You have, um, like, art and music and all that kind of stuff. I mean, I know, you know, the community is is kind of supporting that and, yeah. and you guys like to put on stuff like that here for mm -hmm. sure yeah. yeah absolutely so we have open mic night every wednesday from 7 to 9 30 which is really cool we've really seen the local talent come out of their shells um we have people that haven't sang for a long time or play the guitar so that's been a lot of fun so that's every wednesday every thursday we have trivia from seven to nine and then every saturday we have live music so just a lot of local people from all over. Um, every now and then on Sundays, we'll get some extra live music. And then throughout the month, we have paint nights and um, like essential oil night and lots of lots of different activities, a lot of crafty stuff too. So, and you, you just, I mean, you he just loves have the, to make the beer. He or, loves the crafty stuff. The crafty, do you really? Yeah, that's my favorite night, yeah. Are you serious? <laughs> 
<laughs> the guy's an artist in a different way. Give him a For break, sure. Amanda. For Come sure. On. <laughs> Um, uh, I love seeing everybody's creations come to life. It's though, cool. So I can say that it is well, neat Well, I noticed you even, yeah. <laughs> when, do, you, do you come down here with your wallet and, and pay for some of this stuff that, that people, you're yeah. pretty choosy, <laughs> I see. Um, yeah. But no, they've got some, some great artwork on the yeah. walls and you, you can tell that some, some people really care about you yeah. know, what you guys are doing here. Yeah. This is actually guys, the, yeah. the artwork on the walls that we feature local artists from the art spot across the street. So we change out all, every like month or two um, just to try to get some more, some more business, you know, to go over the art spot. There's so much local talent around here. So um, it's pretty cool. A lot of the, the artwork really everywhere in here is from the local artists. They're very talented. And then you, you know, you got an artist that makes the beer. <laughs> For sure. Just... I'll have to have Darla start working with them. Yeah. Well, do you paint Amanda? Not no? really, no. And you haven't even gotten the hang of it since? I'm like the level of our daughter, three-year-old, she <laughs> painting. She tells me I do a good job. Well, hey. Yeah, they look, they look she similar. Can, she'll be your critic one day. <laughs> yes. She'll be your biggest supporter yeah. right now. For sure, for sure. Yeah. All right. Up next, we're going to take a look at the brewer's quarters, and they're going to show us around upstairs. You're not going to want to miss this. All right, as promised, we are here in the Brewers' Quarters. Man, this is this is a beautiful place. Thank you. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about how this came about and the whole scheme of things. Sure. So how, how this whole idea really started, um, whenever Andy and I traveled out west and also when we moved back home, you know, we, we travel for beer. You know, we love craft beer, so we'd travel for beer. And we'd go to a couple cities and, you know, it was too far to drive home and we wanted to enjoy a couple of drinks and not have to worry about driving. So we always look for places to stay. So we knew once we uh, moved back here and if we did open up a brewery, we thought it'd be a cool idea to open up like a, an Airbnb or some place to stay. So this is kind of reminiscent of some of the places where you've stayed, some of the ideas, or you just started with a full empty sketch pad and just said, no, this is what we want to do. Yeah. Well, we, we partnered with our, um, our good friends and our general contractor, the, the brewery, Ross and Renee Blair. Um, so it was kind of like a collaboration between all four of us. Uh, but we really just, you know, the space just gave us this. You know, we were really fortunate. It was a ton of work. Um, but once we started uncovering all the plaster and taking down the ceilings and, you know, we just tried to, to keep it as close to the natural architecture as possible, but then also incorporating a lot of uh, the, the Sandy nuances. Springs feel, yeah, because it is a brewer's quarter, so you're going to find, you know, the, the exposed ductwork and the, um, you know, the electrical that's, that's that's exposed. So a lot of stuff that's over at the brewery, the same features, because we want it to be it's a brewer's quarter, so you want to come up here and feel a little bit of the history, but also Sandy Springs and the brewery. And I noticed <laughs> a little keg action yeah. back here, yeah. full yeah. full blown tap, ready to go. I, is there some? Crawlers in the in the fridge? No, not no? in the fridge right now. That might be something we look into. But um, <laughs> the 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 tap actually, we we figured out how to to tap a growler size. So oh. it's uh, if, if a guest wants to um, get a growler down at the brewery, we can bring it up and tap it for them. So it'll stay fresh for a couple of days if they're here for a couple of days, um, or uh, that way it's kind of a reasonable volume of beer to put up in a in a brewer's quarters because you just. You just don't know how much to be they, responsible yeah to be responsible <laughs> that was the main thing we were kind of this, worried about but <laughs> this is beautiful yeah. thanks yeah thank you yeah all right we're back talking with andy this time around of the uh, sandy springs brewing company and he's gonna let us know a little bit about what you might do that's the same and a little bit what you do that's different from other breweries we do have a mill room, so it's back in the corner. Um, so we mill all the grain that we use for our beer. Um, that's millable, that is. Um, and there's a flex auger that brings it over here, and this is the mash tun. So all the grain comes through here, um, basically is mixed with uh, certain temperatures of water, activate different enzymes that break starch down into sugar. Um, this is also where the body and the color of the beer takes place. Um, that sits in here for about 60 to 90 minutes, and then it gets transferred over to uh, the vessel over here which is our boil kettle uh, and that's where it was boiled uh, hops are hops are added um, that usually boils for about 90 minutes as well um, before it is run through a heat exchanger 
cooled down uh, to 68, 70 degrees and transferred into one of the fermenters. Um, our, this brew house uh, is capable of brewing five barrels at a time. Um, if we do a double batch day, we, will, we might brew twice in one day, and that's uh, when we can fill our 10 barrel tanks. So we have two of those as well for popular beers that sell a lot. You do have another type of beer that, that there's a little more sp special ingredients and that type yeah. of thing? Yeah, so the tank in the back is called a hot liquor tank. Uh, it holds hot water for the brewing process. Uh, hot water is used at various points. Uh, we use it uh, for sanitization or um, um, also it's used for sparging when we rinse the grain of the sugar that we've created uh, over to the boil kettle. But uh, for one of the beers we uh, call Happy Sappy, uh, we empty that and then um, fill it up with tree sap basically from our farm. So we harvest about uh, 280 gallons to 300 gallons of tree sap for that beer, uh, which is coming up actually. I need to remember to get my stuff together for that one. But, um, and then uh, we basically use that throughout the whole brewing process instead of using water. So that's a unique beer. It's kind of a fun one. Um, has a sugar content to it, so it ends up being a little bit of a higher alcohol beer um, and sweeter. There's a lot of maple syrup in it as well. Was that your so, first beer? Uh, no. No? No. That was one that we did at home, uh, home brewing. So uh, as far as our process here, um, the local brewing community has given on this size scale uh, they gave me a lot of advice and you know with talking with them um, that they, they've helped uh, help me guide me in this scale of brewing but before that this is the only brewery i've ever worked in so as far as other process goes uh, i really have no answer as far as how we do things versus others it's probably a, a combined with how everybody does it around here just based on conversations and uh, things that I've had with other brewers in the area. So. I would say that's a good thing, Andy, <laughs> yeah. to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah. So All right. I'm grateful for that, for sure. All right. I want to talk a little bit this time, Andy, about some of the fermenters and uh, how things work. Sure. So after uh, the, the wort is what it's called at that time is boiled, it gets transferred, cooled and transferred into one of the fermenters. We have um, four five barrel fermenters and one 10 barrel fermenter. So depending on how much we brew that day, we'll fill one of those. And then um, fermentation times can vary depending on the style of beer that's in there, um, whether it's an ale or lager, we do, we do both, some of both, mostly ales here at this brewery, but um, just depends on the type of beer it is and how long it ferments. But uh, once it's done with fermentation, it goes through kind of a secondary fermentation period and then is cooled. Um, I'll harvest the yeast and reuse it for other uh, beers. And um, then the beer is transferred out to one of the bright tanks that are in the tap room. Um, there's also a 10 barrel bright tank back in the corner back there, but uh, that's where the beer is conditioned, carbonated, and then we keg it from there. Do you put the, that stuff back in a keg and then throw it back in the cooler? The yeast? yeast? Or, yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I harvest it into a keg and then uh, we'll reuse it within uh, about a week or so. Um, okay, so you get like more bang for your buck as yeah, far as the yeast process. Yeah, because yeast is expensive, yeah. So that's something that I had to learn in, in going into the commercial side of brewing was uh, the expense of yeast and then how to manage uh, the brew schedule so that you're fitting in, because we don't just use one style of, one type of yeast. Um, so if I can, some yeast you just can't reuse because you just, I don't brew, too many beers with that style of yeast, so uh, some I can't do that with. But our house yeast and things like that, I make sure I have the schedule up so that I'm reusing it and, and then harvesting it in a good cycle that's healthy for the yeast. Uh, that way the beer turns out the way it should. <laughs> All right, we're in the wheelhouse here where the, <laughs> where the beer is stored. Yeah. And uh, talking with Andy once again, um, Andy, this is where we keg the beer, send the beer to the front of the house to be drank, yeah. send it out who knows where. Yeah, but so we do, uh, we keg all our beer right at, out in the tap room by the bright tanks or in the brewery, wheel them in here, and then they get set up to be served on draft. So uh, this is where uh, all our, these kegs here are all the ones that are tapped to be served out in the tap room. Right now our lines are being cleaned, um, but uh, it's kind of a, kind of a, cluster to try to get all these uh, with 17, 16 different taps, um, trying to get them all fit in and 
James. So the beers that we'll be up. tasting in a little bit will be coming from this room. Yep. We got Hometown. Here. We yep. got Meet Virginia. Yep. Uh, Dolly we got Mama. some IPA. <laughs> Mother Goose Land. Yeah. So a lot of good stuff comes out of this. <laughs> yeah. This area, yeah. the brewery. Yep. This is my favorite part of the show that we do at Obru. It's called beer tasting, which nothing pretty much to it, except the cool thing is we have eight beers, four for him, four for me. Andy, let's start drinking and tasting some beer. That sounds like a plan. I yeah. think it's something we can handle. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. You tell me what we're doing here. All right. Number one, Lost Gold. Okay. So, yeah, that was uh, a recipe that we'd made um, for a while. We wanted to make something, uh, especially for a new brewery, that's very drinkable, kind of an introduction beer to craft brewing. Um, but the cream ale is a, is a really historical beer style, which I always appreciated anyway. So oh. very light, easy to drink. Um, cool glasses. Back in the day, the... the uh, ale brewers were trying to compete with lager brewers by brewing um, using corn or flaked maize or um, things to, to make the beer very crisp and clean. So um, that's the, kind of what the, the Lost Gold is about. And the Lost Gold has a, a lot of Minerva history too. Um, there's a legend um, in this area of the Lost French Gold. That's why we named it that, where um, the, the French apparently buried um, a treasure of gold at some point. Uh, they were being attacked by the British soldiers back in one of the earlier wars and um, supposedly that's still buried somewhere around this area between here and um, Bolivar. Uh, so between Sandy Springs and Lockport Brewery there so should be a tre treasure of gold there somewhere. Maybe um, you and, and you and Andrew I think from Andrew Marburger from We're Lockport. working on it. <laughs> Just work your way to that center spot there yeah. and, and yeah. Uh, well you, you might want to take a couple crowlers along. Yeah that's the plan. And you but. probably end up sharing a crowler and the treasure won't really matter. Yeah but, but um, uh, yeah that's where the name came from and it's um, it's got a lot of Minerva history to it so that's one of our best sellers for sure. Very nice taste. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Moving to number two. Number two is Dolly Mama. It's our um, straightforward American IPA. Um, Dolly Mama is the nickname for our pug who traveled out west with us in our motorhome. Um, she went to all, you know, pretty much all the areas we went to, a lot of the breweries we went to, and um, it was inspired by her. So Citra Hops, uh, we tried to make an IPA that's very just straightforward, drinkable, um, not real bitter. Um, citrusy and not bitter just straight in the forehead <laughs> definite IPA yeah so it's that's another tasty. mainstay that we have here at Sandy Springs all the time number um, three we've got happy sappy so this is a pretty red yeah yeah it's an amber this is um, it's an imperial amber this is a beer we've brewed uh, way back uh, starting as home brewers uh, we decided we experiment a little bit. Um, I grew up on a maple farm, um, and so I decided. And I like pancakes. Hey, then that's you know this has got a lot of maple syrup. Um, the the whole process of brewing involves a lot of water, and um, for this beer we use uh, tree sap for that whole process. So our first batch of happy sappy was brewed on a five barrel scale. Normally it was ten gallons at home at a time, and um, so we basically transport. 250 gallons of tree sap down to the brewery and then um, there's some cinnamon and clove in there and also about three gallons of maple syrup so mm. it's kind of yeah it's kind of a heavy hitter at 11 percent would so. you call those beer jacks mm -hmm. yeah yeah exactly <laughs> yeah, you put a little on the pancakes drink a little put a little on the pancakes more yeah, absolutely. butter absolutely <laughs> <laughs> All right, and last but not least, number four on the list, Meat Virginia. Yep, that's another, uh, another. it's an imperial stout. This is named after one of our uh, favorite patrons that comes in. This was, uh, Virginia was one of my pastors as a kid, um, and she's come in and supported us, and um, she comes in on Fridays, you know, has great conversations with the folks that come in to see us, well, and, trust um, me, I know. Yeah, <laughs> you've met her. She's she's <laughs> one of a kind. Lady. She's she's an incredible human being, and uh, we wanted to make a really strong. She's a huge stout fan, and we wanted to make it the sweetest, strongest stout we could 
for Virginia, and uh, so that's where we came up with this one. It does not yeah. disappoint. Mm -hmm. The the beers that you have on you you might have anywhere between how many and how many beers uh, we at try, a time. We have sixteen taps. We also have an infusion tower, so we can take uh, any of our beers and infuse it um, with. We change that weekly, so Is it's there anything. Apples in there right now. Right now we've yeah. got uh, limes and uh, raspberries in limes there. Raspberries. Yeah, so that just it changes weekly, um, and. It's just kind of a fun way to, to do a different version of a beer uh, that we have on draft. So normally we have about 16 on draft, and um, yeah, so. And you could fill the, you can get the growlers, growlers, yep. I'm yep. sorry, growlers, or where you fill growlers Yeah, we too. sell growler cans, so 30 out, 32 ounce cans, and we also sell uh, 64 ounce growlers as well, so to go. All so, right. Yeah. We get to meet Virginia. Hi. Hi there, how are you? I'm good. And you're drinking? I'm not drinking Meat Virginia. I'm drinking Kilby Pleasure. And why do you like it? Oh, I just, I don't know. It's a Scottish ale, and I prefer ales over IPA. I mean, well, an ale, an IPA, I guess, isn't it? But anyway, I don't know. I just like the taste. You like the taste? But you, you had Meat Virginia earlier. Oh, it was tasty. Wasn't it? Was that tasty good? goodness. And that dark chocolate flavor oh. comes through. Yes. Andy does a yeah. really super he, job. He does the super job, yes. Absolutely. And you come in here during the day, do a little crossword, a well, little Sudoku. Yeah, I, I would rather come during the day and when there aren't as many people, and then go home when it's still daylight. There you go. You know, I, I'm old. I'm not your average beer drinker, I don't think. You know I what? Know. As long as you like beer, I think you're yeah. an average beer drinker, oh, and that's okay. okay with us. Okay. Because we fine. like beer. And Do you? Yeah, and yeah. I'm Craig Morris, and I like beer. Okay. And I got to meet Virginia. You got to meet Virginia. Continuing to talk to patrons here at uh, Sandy Springs. Andy? Name's Andrew. Andrew? No. But I can call you Andy. You can call me whatever you want. All right. But as long as I called you and said, hey, let's go have a beer, what beer would it be? Oh, here it would probably be the 232 Belgian. They're Belgian strong. Uh, love that style. And they do a really good version of it. And so that's my uh, favorite. But I actually kind of get a different beer each time I come in. I kind of make my way around the menu. And I like trying different things and seeing what I do like, what I don't like, and getting into different styles, so. So membership has its privileges. What are, as far as being a member of the pub club mm -hmm. um, membership, what, what, what do you get that's special? Um, on Wednesdays, today. Hump day! Uh, yes, <laughs> all right. You, uh, it's 10% uh, off cool. the drinks. They do a, uh, they're gonna have a pig roast, like a, full pig that are going to be uh, cooking stuff that they're going to have a party and all the members are invited out to that. Uh, it, actually on my card it has all the things that are on it. I don't you don't have to. You don't have to remember the, uh, all of them. What's mainly important to us is that you enjoy their beer. Oh completely. Yeah I've all the different styles that they've done that I've tried all of them are really true to what those styles are and they do a really good version of them and I've liked pretty much everything I've tried. Well, uh, I'll let it, Andy and Amanda know that, uh, well, maybe someday you can have a beer named after you. Oh. <laughs> All right. All right. We're talking to more patrons, and joining us this time around is Jackie. Jackie's just sitting a couple bar stools away from Meet Virginia, and uh, this guy that wants to have a beer named after him on the backside here. This guy's probably pushing for the same thing. Uh, what kind of beer are you drinking? Uh, the Lost Gold. Lost Gold? Yeah. Is, is that a staple for you? Like, yeah, yeah, that's the only thing I could, get. The only thing? The only thing. Out of all that stuff. Yeah, I'm not a craft beer guy, but I love it. But that you one. might eventually. They're I hoping like you're. Dark beers. They're hoping. No? Yeah, that one, they, it stays on tap, so I'm good. All right. We come every Wednesday, so. Every Wednesday. Yeah. Hump day! Yeah. I gotta love that. Right. Well, that's a good deal. Um, how long has it been? Have you been here since day one, or? Just eight months, nine, eight months. Ten months. So this is in your introductory to craft beer. Yeah, the, my wife she drank a lot of craft beers, and uh, we actually come here last, not 
this Christmas, but the following one before a company party that I work for, we come here. And so you enjoy the food too? Yeah, we usually eat some food. All right, that's Pigs excellent. and waffles, you know. Pigs and waffles. Yeah. That's bacon, right? Uh, it's like pulled pork. Pulled pork? Yeah. Okay. All right. It's very good. We would like to thank Andy and Amanda Conrad for their hospitality. Make sure to join us for another episode of Obrew as we're in search of Ohio's finest beers.